Hey, James. Thanks for Hi, coming Margaret. out. Absolutely. I appreciate it. This is always so much fun up here, isn't it? Absolutely. A lot of fun stuff going on. <laughs> Welcome to the keep yourself warm. Try not to, to get lazy because you'll get cold. But I am so glad you're going to help me out with this. I need to work on, and just so you know what I'm about, I've really got to get the word out about all of these flame jetting injuries. It's really internal container explosions. Like, let's just call it a more accurate name. Um, internal container explosions are happening all the time. 10 or 11 times a day, once a day, once every 19 hours, somebody's burned to death from these. And that's just minimum numbers. Those aren't the most realistic numbers. Those are just the ones that are coned down to be very quantified, they're NFPA numbers, so they're not my numbers. But if we look at just how many injuries happen from gas cans alone, that end up in burn units according to the NIST systems that I've pulled data from and gotten this from ABA, there's 18,000 gasoline alone injuries. So we have a lot I had of no people idea. getting injured, right. Now how does something like this happen? Basically, when you go to tip or pour, um, the vapor, the invisible vapor trail, becomes a wick and it will okay. suck any ignition source inside the container and then it shoves all of that out. Like a flamethrower. Yeah, exactly like a flamethrower. In fact, I will show you in a fun sort of way what this looks like. I love how long it takes. <laughs> Let's have a moment. We need better equipment. Yeah, this is not, that's my first time. <laughs> Roll with me. So the air vapor mixture, when you tip a container to pour, there's always going to be the liquid coming out and then the backflow, backdraft of the vapor. Okay. And that has any type of an ignition source, it gets sucked internal to the container and then it shoves all the liquid out in an explosion. So play around with it any way you want. The facts of the matter, these are flashbacks flashbacks in the container, internal container explosion is a very simple way to think about it. The research in this lab where you know they write the best papers, they are the probably the best known in the country or one of the best known. I'm, I obviously learn a lot here so I think super highly of it. I tend to read through everything that they've produced. So to me, internal container explosions is very logical. It makes sense. Absolutely. That describes what happens. So is there a way to prevent one of these? There is. But let me kind of show you how bad it is and we'll get to that. Because Absolutely. if you have one of these happen, that flamethrower effect is going to shoot fluid 10, 15 feet. So please know anything in the path, if that's a human sitting there, they're going to get severely injured and covered in flame. If there's somebody sitting here, you know, if your pet is back here, everybody is going to get doused. Wow. Yeah. Um, Internal container explosions, the, the thing that saves it, that solves it 100% of the time, I don't know if you can see these. These are examples over here of flame arresters. In fact, grab those ones right there for me. Yeah. I'm going to make you hold them up right to the camera. You've got a job to do. <laughs> this is a screen. You've got to just show the screen in. So you can see it allows the liquid to pour, but it will stop any, it's a quenching device. It's a, it's a spark arrester. So if I pour like this, the flame or the ignition cannot go in Correct. with one of these. So it's a quenching device, it's a flashback arrestor. It's a spark arrestor. I grew up calling them spark arresters. Here's two other examples. I will show you plastic and metal. Here's a plastic one. This one can go on all sorts of little uh, alcohol type products, ethanols, methanols, things you'd see in classrooms. This can mm -hmm. also go on um, fireplace fuel, denatured alcohol, things like that. This can go on um, a distilled product that's a very high proof. So imagine if you had like a uh, an alcohol that somebody in a bar is using for entertaining with a flaming drink. Sure, I've seen those before. Okay, that is severe risk for bodily injury because the vapors turn into a cannon. It's, it, it's, it's, it's horrible. When I have videos about it, it it's grotesque. So I'm going to try to avoid that, especially Absolutely. because I'm hoping to get the word out amongst people that have been through this. So my goal for today is anybody that's been burned that didn't know what happened, I'm trying to break it down so that they will understand and say, aha, I get it. Now I'll get involved. Absolutely. So we're trying to get some awareness on that. Absolutely. So I'm going to show you NFPA stats. They say that there's 450 deaths a year, 3,900 injuries, 1.5 billion in direct property damage a year. I would think we got to get the word out to the insurance Absolutely. companies, the liability insurers, commercial insurers. I mean, who the heck should, is writing policies to pay out when you've got this number of injuries and it's completely preventable. So keep in mind that flame arrestor has been around forever and it works every time. So I just want people to take note of the fact that there are regulations and standard groups. This one started in 2007 because they realized 
flame arresters had been taken off of containers in the 2000s. That's so and wrong. And why were they taken off? <sighs> Hurts my heart to say, I think they just did it from a cost savings. I think they didn't really think through um, the game of Russian roulette. When you're putting this in the hands of a consumer and they are tipping cautiously to pour, that's more likely to line up with an ignition source. It's so, when you take the safety guard off, because it had the safety guard on it, when you've removed the safety guard, you've now turned it into Russian roulette. I mean, it really is, it's a bomb. And it's right. a bomb, it's a flamethrower of burning and It happens fluid. here and there, but it's not their problem. Yeah, blame shifting. Let's blame the person that got injured. Oh, I know it's really helpful. Let's, let's put the teacher in jail. Because somehow the teachers at fault when they weren't notified, nobody let them know what the risks were, how they could be prevented. We're not talking about the undisclosed risks, and the manufacturers know. Absolutely. So, you know, parents get charged. Parents get put in jail when their kids get injured. And how do you explain in a microsecond what happened? The human eye cannot fathom right. what happened. It's a really quick explosion. Yeah. I'm going to show you some examples so you'll just understand. Like, this has first invented in the 1800s. So they've been around in fuel containers all through the 18 and 1900s. In the 70s and 80s, this was a really big deal. Um, I remember growing up hearing about all this, and it, the big problem was we called them spark arresters. And everybody talked about the fact that flame arrest, or um, vapors will explode. Like you were told, be very careful. There was public service announcements. People were making sure you knew, um, be careful because Vapors explode, and they don't just explode a little, they, they explode horrifically. Right. So, I'm going to bring the screen back up, because Absolutely. me and my cleverness, I shut that there we sucker go. off. Yeah. So, let's see what my next one is. Hmm. You know what, just to keep it moving along, I think mm -hmm. I'm going to get out of this and show you some of the movies, because they're so much easier if I get to demonstrate yeah. that. Yeah, this is a little not fun stuff. My favorite textbook, oh my God. I, I have to just put a shout out to is. Stanley Glassholm because <laughs> Stanley and I, we are so well bonded. I mean, look at- Everything I, you I, need to know. Everything you need to know. About flame arresters. Oh, like, careful. Deflagration and detonation. Here's a stupid thing. These are explosions. The difference between a detonation and a deflagration, fancy science word to say Absolutely. whether or not it's subsonic, I hate stuff like that. It doesn't sound as risky unless uh, yeah. it's explosion. Yeah, so. yeah. Deflagration doesn't sound like you say it's a detonation. People are like, careful, that's a bomb. Yeah. But oh, we happened in the open air. We'll call it a deflagration. So these vapor explosions also are called flashback fires. So if you've ever had any of these injuries, if you know anybody that was injured this way, please forward this on to them. We want to make sure they're understanding that flammable liquids um, explode. Vapors explode. They become a flamethrower. Some people call them a fire-breathing dragon. That's how some victims have referred to it. Flame jetting is a term ATF uses, but it's really about defective products. When you take the safety guard off, um, it was always on all the literature. There are safety campaigns about it. That barrier method works, and it prevents internal container explosions. So I don't need to cover this too much, but I do kind of want to show you um, I think it's better if I show you right here. This is what it looks like when you've got a flame arrestor on there. So this is the barrier. This is the, what we were showing. If you have one of these, if it's plastic, if it's metal, uh -huh. the flame can come right up, but you're not going to have an explosion. It's contained. It mm -hmm. arrests it. It prevents it from turning into a bomb. Here's some products that aren't so safe, but look at how this looks like it's vinegar. How can you tell this is you know, telling you how bio it is, it's a ventless fireplace fuel, you would never know what the real mm -hmm. risks are. I want to make sure people understand. This used to be a problem on lighter fluid. It had one hole, and it was a real problem because the hole was too big, and when you released the sucking air, it could pull the um, flame right inside and create a bomb. Three small holes is a flame That's arrestor. Okay. All of these are products that are on the market that all have flame arresters. So let's pay attention. There's commercial ones available that have plastic and metal. Some people are doing it. And some manufacturers and some trade associations are trying to say that those aren't commercially available. They've never seen that. Even though it's their companies that used to have it on there. So I, I struggle with that one. Mm -hmm. This is a company that looks just like this patent from 1931. No Spill has this one. I like the No Spill. I think they've done a good job. Kudos to them. 
for what they've created with a flame arrester inside their product and they've got a good nozzle and they've done some other safety features that I like. This is the temperatures that this stuff spits out and it's crazy hot and it's terrible awful. I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on that because it's gruesome. The gist of it is you get hit with these temperatures and um, it's hotter than a crematorium. Mm -hmm. So that flaming liquid is terrible. Let me show you what it looks like. I showed you what it's like when you don't when you do have a flame arrestor. Here's what it looks like if you don't have a flame arrestor. Okay. Can you see how you can see the flame crawling into the bottle? Yeah. Then what? And then it turns into a flamethrower. Yeah. And it explodes outward. And a lot of liquid comes out, so that means your body's gonna okay. get covered. You get covered in liquid that won't stop burning. No. And it's gruesome. I'm gonna show you another one, same sort of a thing. Keep in mind, when, you know, it depends, it's a function of how much fluid is in there and how much um, the bottle's been tipped and the angle and, you know, head space, things like that. Let's just watch this. I'm going to stop it when it starts to spit. Look at how much fluid comes out. Like, that is crazy. And it's all ignited fluid. It's all ignited fluid. So if that hits your skin, at 2,000, 3,000 degrees, depending on which product it is, right? Because it's slightly different temperatures for methanol, ethanol, gasoline, and other products. Keep in mind, once you've doused your skin, your skin's going to be charred immediately. But the fascia underneath is turned to fuel. And that's going to keep if burning. If I try to put you out, like if, you, if it was me, and you put your hand on me, uh -huh. and you took your hand off, I'd still burn. Uh -huh. You have to completely suffocate it, deoxygenate it. So if a, a fire extinguisher is needed. Or like a blanket, or, a blanket. Okay. or you know, you can rip your shirt off. You know what I mean? Grab a towel, um, but you you know, stop, drop, and roll. Here's the thing: stop, drop, and roll doesn't work. So many of people that have been um, involved in these types of thermal tragedies and injuries will tell you: stop, drop, and roll. They try, and that's pretty hard to think about while burning alive. Yeah. Um, but rolling allows it to just stay back on, right? Because it would be like putting your hand on off. Mm -hmm. Parents have grabbed a kid and thrown them under um, a sink and they pull them out and they're still on fire. Because you have to put so much water that you get it to dilute enough that it will go out. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, um, it takes a lot of water. This stuff is miscible in water. I hate to get into hard science, I just mm -hmm. know it's terrible. I'm gonna show you this one because this is, again, this is what it looks like in a classroom. This is just the horror of a student. Imagine you're somewhere close to the teacher doing a demonstration. This is slow motion. This is only a couple of seconds. And the classroom is where most of these incidents occur. Well, I'd say this. There's an awful lot of the really horrific ones, and there's people that I, I know too many human beings firsthand that have had it here. I wouldn't say that statistically it's where most of them are occurring. I would say it's where um, a lot of the most preventable ones are, and the teachers get charged. But it's happening in common everyday life. It's happening... Um, schools, labs, um, if you're at a social gathering and you're chafing dishes, if you're at a social, at a church, your grandmother can get ignited. If you're um, gathered with a campfire, a bonfire, you know, that, that could be happening for a football team, that could be happening for a family gathering. Mm -hmm. Man, tipping and pouring an unguarded and unprotected and unsafe defective container opening should not be allowed anymore in this country. We're too smart. Mm -hmm. Other countries have been on this for years, and for some reason we haven't. And there's such a quick, simple, cheap solution. Yes, those flame arresters, we've done the research here at this lab. We've been pulling them, we've been through this. Um, they're pennies. You know, the ethanol, excuse me, the alcohol, um, charcoal lighter fluid, all they had to do is replace a mold one time. Mm -hmm. Injection molding doesn't cost you a lot more once you put a new mold on there. So you got a one-time mold change. You went from one big hole to three small holes. That's negligible. Mm -hmm. They're done. So and that solves the problem. That solved the problem. We had so many problems with outdoor heaters um, with the gel fuels. They took all the gel fuels off the market. Here's how crazy the manufacturers are. They said, we've got one of two ways to solve it. We can take and put a flame arrestor mm -hmm. on there, and it's going to cost us a few pennies, and some of them did. Mm -hmm. cost them five, seven cents to put the flame arrestor on those until they got the quantities out. Other people said, we'll take the thickening agent out, and now we can get around it. It's not a gel. I see, but it's still dangerous. And that's what happened in my life. Like, I am a statistic. 
I understand. Even though I bought the right product, I paid the premium amount, I went to the right places, I made sure I was doing it the right way, nothing reckless was taking place. I represent so many of us that did nothing wrong. And I also represent like the 13 year old boys, I'm sure you can relate. I think it's horrible when they say, oh boys will be boys, it was 13 year olds and we don't know what happened with them. It's no different than the kid in the classroom. Absolutely. It's no different than if it's, if it's my front porch, it's no different than if it's, you know, in any of these other common everyday settings. Mm -hmm. This so could have easily happened to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it could happen to any of us. But this gives people an idea of why it's so confusing. That subsection bomb, that subsection blow, you don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. So we really want to get the word out. Anybody that's had burns, whether you were lucky and it was light burns, whether it was severe burns, if you have photos, if you can get in touch with us, the best way to reach me is my website or our Facebook page. And our group is called Not Your Turn to Burn. Um, unfortunately, we're the ones whose turn it was to burn. Well, you can't save us. What we want to do is protect everybody else. And we want to say, look, Australia has been all over this. Other countries have been all over this. Anybody with heating, cooking, and lighting, you know, if the electricity goes out and you grab a, a lantern and uh -huh. you've got fuel, be very careful. Don't use products that don't have a flame arrestor. We want to get the manufacturers to understand we're going to start demanding flame arresters on products for safety. We want parents to know of their students in high school science classes, middle school science classes, college mm -hmm. classes. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many college labs have you been through, if you had to guess? I've been through four or five, and we always work with chemicals and flammable products. And you are at multiple... At multiple levels. Yeah. yeah I've been through college and grad school. Yeah. And I've never once actually heard of the flame arrestor. It's, it's time we brought it back into the common Absolutely. vernacular. Like this used to be something that we all knew. Like we had coal in our houses. We knew that the risk was coal shoots, mm -hmm. the coal dust. We need to put that risk back into these situations where we're just saying the safety guard, it, it costs a few pennies. Like, I don't know if you can appreciate this, but this is a spice jar from my house and I just grabbed some screen door just to demonstrate that's how easy it is to make yeah that if you just have um, you know an ability to take a, a container and put in a rester it's not that hard I mean if I can figure it out the company's manufacturing it there's way smarter it. manufacturers out there I've met several of them and I've got to say some manufacturers I, I've probably been in touch with three or so in the last six months that have contacted me to find out how they can get this on their products so I'm grateful to those companies. I want to bring them out. Like, to my knowledge, Sterno has had this for a long time. They are really safe on stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, some companies had to learn the hard way, and some decided that they would run through all their inventory or they would change their formulation and they would not bother worrying about public safety. Mm -hmm. We're going to change that dynamic. We're going to start holding people accountable, and we'll start naming names to say, who is the blockings? Who are the ones that have kept this from happening? Because this has been going on since 2007. Um, when I started my research, there's two people I came across. One is this woman, Diane Brenneman. She's an attorney that represented a lot of them. But my personal favorite is an ATF mom. I, I saw a video of a mom whose daughter it happened to, and I just took me a year or so to find her. And she is just one of my people because we understand what each other goes through. So I just, I need more smart parents and grandparents and guardians and loved ones and everybody that's around those injured to help me. I, I want photos, I want contact information, I wanna know where you, what city you live in, I wanna help you get to your congressman or your senator, I will help you write a letter. Please know us burn survivors wanna keep you from these injuries. And um, burns are horrible, they are really cruel. Thank Absolutely. you, James. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Hopefully we can stop all the burns from happening in the future. Well, I need your help to help me with flame arresters. Absolutely. Your science knowledge, your background, you can run, but you can't hide because I really <laughs> need your help. And you're... you're